and I spilled coffee on myself. That's what I do. I'm gonna stop the board here. I just spilled paint water. What I do as a professional is make a mess. That's what I do. Hey guys, I got something kind of specific I want to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, creating, finding your style, your inner voice, your panache, what makes you you. And this applies to really anybody, especially those working in any kind of creative outlet. Although today I'm going to be speaking more specifically about visual arts as you know, that's where I'm coming from, but I think you can take the same principles and apply it to anything that you're doing. So I am looking at this from somebody, little disclaimer here, who is still working this out myself and trying to find my own voice and where I wanna be, where I'm coming from, and how I want to portray my work. Okay, so. I'm coming from an interesting perspective. It's been a little while since I've been out of art school, but I've worked as a designer and some freelance illustration for quite a few years. And it's been good in a lot of ways, but what it's done with the particular situations I've been in is it's kind of made me jack of all trades, master of none. So I've done a million different things. I've worked on illustrations for different types of projects and different mediums. I've done a lot of design work that was all over the board from everything from installations and signage and logos and ads, just everything. And while there's certainly, I look at that as having a little bit of an advantage, it gives me a very broad perspective and expertise. I've gotten really good at using the Adobe suite of programs, but it also has prevented me from finding a clear voice um, of my own. None of these projects for the most part were for me and the projects I've done of my own, it's been that work has been in, I guess I would say, like fits and spurts. I've never been able to take the time to really just develop something out. And then every time I go back to it, I have a different idea. I have a different thing I wanna try. I went through a long period of doing digital illustrations. Like maybe I would ink it, scan it onto the computer and color it in Photoshop. Or, But then I got back to, I really wanna paint again. I want that tangible voice. So I also enjoy painting in acrylic, but then I decided to go back to working with a little bit of watercolor. So I've been working with a little bit of watercolor. And I still haven't figured out what I want to say, how I'm going to approach it. I have a lot of different ideas that I just haven't gotten there yet. Like I like, for me, where I'm trying to approach things and figure out, I want the tangible of the paint or the drawing on something real, but I also really like graphic qualities of things. Um, so trying to figure out how I can combine those elements. And I think that that would make me happy because I, I work on a painting and I like it, but it's missing something or I work digitally and I like it, but it's missing something. And I just, I need to work out how to combine those things. That's for me personally. I think a lot of young artists, um, either starting out on their own or coming out of art school, are concerned with, uh, what's my style? Because that's something, if you want to work in illustration or, or whatever, you kind of have to have that style to be recognizable. Um, and the common advice, as it's been thus far, that I've heard is often, don't look for your style, it will naturally emerge. I think that's partially true, but I think you do have to work at some things also. One of the most important things I think you can do and what I'm gonna be working on going forward is exercises and really getting down the fundamentals. Just become really good at your craft on the most basic levels, understand principles of composition, what makes a composition that communicates things that you're interested in, how does it work? Uh, negative, positive space, using color. And of course, 
anatomy and shading and rendering and perspective and all these things. We can always work on those. And I think that the more you develop those, it's like learning the rules so you can break the rules. Um, because part of finding a visual style is also determining your realism, abstractism, abstractism, abstraction, abstraction. Realism and abstraction, where are you gonna fall on that line? And how are you gonna break the rules? The more you know the rules, the more you can do things deliberately. And I think you have to kind of know what you wanna say. You have to know what you like, what appeals to you, and pull those things and work on those things. It's like they say, there's very little new in the world, but what you do is you take what appeals to you what speaks to you and what you want to put out into the world and you make it yours. Like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You learn the principles, you get good at them, and you put them together. I think that that's how to develop yourself. And I also think that it's something they're always going to be developing. There's artists that I started following years ago because I love something that they did. And over the course of their careers, what they're doing now is so completely different from what they did then. As artists, you can't just create the same work over and over and over again. You should always be pushing and trying to figure out what you're doing. And even though I've been a working artist for a lot of years, I feel like I'm so far <laughs> away from accomplishing that, but that's something I'm gonna be working on. Um, that'll be a part of my journey here on YouTube too. So one thing I've been doing just recently is I took a picture that I did in a previous episode, a couple back about inner demons, link above, and uh, I created a digital illustration from it. And I decided, well, what would happen if I try it in different mediums? And I'm kind of trying to like feel some paths out for myself. So as you've seen, I did a little acrylic painting. Oh, the lighting is a little crazy. Got the sun out shining today, which is nice. I did a little acrylic on board. That was, that was fun. It's different than the orig original uh, digital piece. And I'm like, mm, that's okay. Let's try something different. Did a watercolor. Now, I have my, I've been <laughs> experimenting on how to record myself painting and I have my camera up a little high, so I apologize for the low quality of me zooming in in this video to try to get a good view of what I was doing, but this is what that turned out like. There we go. A cute little guy. Eh. <laughs> I like the immediacy of watercolor. Um, I'm still not, like this still isn't even where I'd finish this piece as I always really loved working with ink. That's something that goes back to high school when I did these ridiculous detailed angsty pictures and uh, I never really figured out how to incorporate that into my work so I have this idea in the back of my head of using ink as a graphic element. I also really love things like um, digital patterns and half tones and stuff like that so I've been kind of painting playing with different brushes in Photoshop. I just have to figure out how to pull it all together. Let me tell you I love I've been buying these little tiny uh, watercolor pads. They're like a little postcard. You could actually do a painting and mail it to a person, which is kind of cool. But um, I like these because it's like you can do quick little studies. Um, it's just fun to have and work with. It's a little non-committal because it's small. You don't feel like you have to make it like some fabulous work of art, but it's just trying things and playing around. And this is a great way to do that and pretty affordable. Cause Nice watercolor pads can be pretty ridiculous. That's a little bit about how I'm approaching things going forward to kind of hone in on how I want to work in my style. I'm going to be setting time aside every day to work on the fundamentals and then just keep trying to figure out how I can combine elements that I am attracted to into saying what I want to say as an artist. That's where I am and I would recommend try the same thing. As a visual artist, that's more literal, but it could be as a filmmaker, as a writer, as 
anything you're producing. Even like fashion style, it can be that literal <laughs> if that's your thing. Um, yeah, I mean, we just have to put the work in, put the time in and make it happen. And that's, that's exactly where I am right now. And I hope that this is helpful to you. I hope that it gives you some ideas of maybe where to start with, maybe go backwards and start again with the basics, really nail the basics, build off of that, learn what you, determine what you want to learn and how that can get you from here to there. And just across the board, work at it. So I think I've said my piece. I hope it was useful. And I promise I won't paint this demon again. <laughs> right, so subscribe if you want to follow me along on my journey. Maybe it'll be entertaining. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of weird stuff to fill in the gaps. But, uh, you know, I always like to see an artist's pathway, journey, journey. And I've spilled my quota of things for the day. I hope I didn't stain the carpet. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Subscribe, like, all that jazz. Everybody be awesome. Bye.